Hello, Gemini. Welcome to your weekly reading for August 19th to the 25th. This is for Gemini, Gemini Rising, and Gemini Moon. We're going to jump right into it, Gemini. This is the week. If you saw your monthly forecast, I did say this is when you start feeling that shift. We'll call it a shift, all right? That squeeze. This is like the week of the weeks of August. Uh, the energies are really strong this week, and it's sort of like this crescendo from last week. I will mention some aspects that are still relevant from last week, this week, but I also do leave all the key astrological dates in the description box. But anyway, let's get started. It's, it definitely is going to feel like, uh, you know, f this week is going to feel like you're on a hike. All right. You're on a hike and the hill gets a little bit steeper and it gets steeper and it gets steeper. All right. It could even feel as if your path is getting more narrow and narrow. And that is with the Saturn squares. All right. Also the full moon in Aquarius. This is a big one. It's really, really potent, but you know, you're going to make it to the top of the mountain. You got, you know, the million dollar view up there. It feels really good up there. You're going to feel that breeze. There's probably an ice cream shop, uh, taco, something like you're going to love it. Okay. It's going to be worth it. You're going to trigger those pleasure centers in your brain for all the being rewarded. Remember, Saturn rewards you in the end. Saturn is karma. So this is going to be a week where it can be incredibly life changing for you. I mean, you've got Mars and Jupiter in your sign for the first time in 35 years. Like this is big. Now, let's let's kick it up. Mm. You hear that? The church bells. Hey, Gemini, it seems like you always give the church bells to sign. Now, Monday, August 19th, we've got that full moon in Aquarius, very potent. We got two T squares. It's I listen, the, the main takeaway here, uh, it is at 27 degrees. Very interesting. That basically is your degree, by the way. All right. So it's a mutable degree. Uh, but here's the thing squaring uh uranus at 27 degrees uh the sun is squaring uranus okay at, at, at 27 degrees mercury your ruling planet is squaring uranus remember that happened a few days before uh so this is really big i talk about this in my last uh live stream the fact that 27 sure yeah it's a mutable degree uh it's pretty flexible for you. Okay. So there's going to be some changes that you're adapting to energetically. I feel like you want it. All right. I feel like that you're going to want this big change for this full moon. Uh, 27 to seven equals nine. Remember 27 degrees. Uh, and then you got to think about the fact that it's happening uh, on August 19th, all right? Eight uh, plus one equals nine. Nine plus nine, 18. One plus eight equals nine. So nine is a really strong number here. And just out of sheer coincidence, nine represents the humanitarian, humanity, okay? That is what Aquarius is. So this is a very significant uh, full moon. And it is one that everyone's been talking about i even mentioned my monthly or you know your annual forecast this is one you're going to want to look out for nine is fulfillment as well by the way if you wanted uh if you were curious about that and nine is linked to the planet mars so that also brings some energy to the mix because mars is a planet of you know conflict and the ruler for Aries, the God of War, but it's also your ambitions, your passions, your drive. It's taking steps toward action. And as you know, Mars is in your sign right now. And so it does feel like you're a little bit invincible this week, a little bit bulletproof. And I love that. But anyway, you know, Mars and Jupiter, they're, uh, you know, Jupiter is going to be spraying Saturn as well as, you know, Mars already has. We'll talk about it in a second. But remember, full moons do illuminate. They bring things to the surface. They are also culmination points. Now, this full moon in Aquarius is happening in your ninth house. So very interesting here with the Mercury square that's happening as well. Uh, there could be something coming to an end when it comes to publishing or broadcasting, or there could be something here with travel. All right. I would not be surprised if there was some travel element around this time. You could be ending a big trip, long distance trip, or uh, you know, something uh, travel related, foreign cultures, foreign lands. The other thing is ninth house is spirituality. So there could just be this big shift in the way that you're seeing things and your philosophies. All right. So keep that in mind. Now, Uranus, remember Mercury, your ruling planet is squaring Uranus, which is the ruling planet for Aquarius. Um, makes it really potent here. Uranus, as you know, is 
surprises, um, the unpredictable shakeups, but it's also breakthroughs. So breaking free. Remember, Aquarius is uh, radical energy. It's revolutionary. Uh, it's rebellious energy, too. There could be something here you are seeking to break through from. OK, uh, and it could again for y'all, it just. It, 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 this full moon in Aquarius may not have that big of an impact on you as other signs. And I say that because you have this full moon in Aquarius in your ninth house, but then you've got Mercury squaring Uranus, Uranus in your in Taurus in your 12th house. So there again, that is up here. That's a subconscious. It's things beyond the physical plane. It's, uh, it, it's spirituality. It's also healing. So there could be something that you're just unrooting. All right. Sure. There may be something uh, that calls to something that's like deeply rooted in your subconscious, but this is you taking care of it. All right. Now, with that said, this is remember, I said this is breaking free and having that breakthrough energy you may it may require a little bit more effort as normal only because remember the sun is in leo the moon is in aquarius mercury is in taurus so that's a lot of fixed energy all right so uh with that said just you know just be flexible remember uh it's happening at 27 degrees immutable degree your degree this is uh, uh, easily adapting you're so quick-witted anyway you're gemini's you you if anything you know uh goes a little you know squeezy around this time you're gonna be fine all right so keep that in mind uh just remember this is a cycle that is ending a uh, six month cycle that started back in february you can think about what you may have been thinking around that time with the corresponding new moon in aquarius but there's a cycle ending a new one beginning all right now jupiter uh will square saturn at this point this is the greater benefic with the greater malefic. And so this is a big deal. This is the first Jupiter-Saturn square out of the Jupiter-Saturn story. Remember, well, maybe you don't, but they conjuncted back in 2020. December 2020, boom, new story. There's there's something happening here with uh, 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 it happened in Aquarius. So again, a lot of this Aquarius energy that you're feeling, but, uh, this is the first square. We're going to have a second square December 24th. Remember what I said, your monthly forecast, this is a month to practice patience. All right. Jupiter's optimism, wisdom, and Saturn just wants you to be more disciplined with that. Okay. That is Saturn just saying, I'm going Saturn's restrictions, limitations. So it could be part of your personal growth or your even your spiritual growth. Uh, you may be finding a lot more structure in those areas of your life, but also career. OK, so career is a big thing for y'all. It has been ever since Saturn did move into Pisces uh, because Saturn Pisces, uh, that's your 10th house career, public recognition, fame as well. Uh, whatever you're exerting all your energy into that you want to be known for, it's also honors, achievements, even leadership here. Um, so that said, there could be a squeeze that you feel in career. All right. This is that time of the year where uh, you are likely going to connect in terms of intuitively knowing is this what i really want because there may be something that happens around this time that shows you the way that really you resonate with and like okay i get it now i feel this squeeze and i'm just gonna say saturn squeeze me harder because you're not gonna i know what i want i know what i want now remember mars is also squaring saturn as well and so saturn honestly um it's really just asking you to take a really good look at your passions. Um, like what motivates you? Because remember, you may be thinking and processing things anyway with Venus in Virgo, very analytical, a lot of uh, even overthinking things. But then you've got Mercury retrograde as well. So Mercury retrograde in your third house of communication. You are the native ruler of Mercury. I'm sorry, of uh, no, sorry, the third house. So, and Mercury is a ruling planet. So that's really going to affect you. So you may be reassessing things anyway, when it comes to communication, when it comes to, uh, learning things, knowledge, writing, researching, there could be books that you're writing. There's so much, there's something happening here with publishing for, for a lot of Gemini risings. Uh, and I say that, you know, Gemini risings are going to feel these aspects the most, but every Gemini is going to feel this. So just remember with this square, 
practice that patience. Saturn and Pisces, Pisces is, and Jupiter is Pisces ruling planet. It really is. There's this strong spiritual component. So again, there just is you growing spiritually, being in touch with your higher mind. You're going to be fine. You know, there is, I say it all the time, there's a difference between the physical mind and the higher mind. There's going to be a lot of noise here with the physical mind. All right. So a lot of distractions, a lot of noise. Cut through it, all right? Be in touch with your higher mind, all right? That's going to help you truly stay authentic to yourself. Embrace this growth, being strong, not only for you, for people in your life as well. Uh, just vibrate at this high frequency of love, compassion. Tune into that frequency. You're going to radiate, all right? Let it expand and guide you. You have this light inside you, all right? That light heals. Now, Thursday... August 22nd, we officially move into Virgo season. So now you're going to have a lot of emphasis on home. This is your fourth house, domestic sector. So the foundations of your life, home, family matters, parents, children, significant other, real estate. There's definitely going to be something here where you may be putting a lot of attention toward. The other thing is it could just be a sense of service to others, especially that's what Virgo season is all about uh, being very focused on being productive as well in your daily life. So uh, there's also health and work that could be big, big uh, themes that come up for the next four weeks as well. Spend a lot of time in nature. All right, Gemini, especially when we move into Virgo season. Remember, Venus is also in Virgo. Going to square Mars that same day. Mars is in your sign. So we know Venus and Mars. We know these two cosmic lovebirds. They're just not seeing eye to eye. It's like one of those episodes of Friends when Ross and Rachel are just, they got that little tiff or, or whatever. But yeah, so there's something here with relationships, maybe even friendships for you, maybe even situationships. There even could be something with colleagues as well where you're just, you may want to compromise. That's what Venus wants, okay? Being dim diplomatic in situations. Now, if you are in a relationship, romantic relationship, this honestly could be an aspect that just fuels, all right? Fuels that passion, stokes the flame. So it actually could work in your favor. Remember, all these aspects is how you handle it, is how you handle these energies around this time. You may even think about you know, the health of a relationship. Like, is this sustainable? Is this something that's working? Is this something that I want? Remember, you control your reactions to things and your reality. All right. Now, uh, on the 23rd, Mercury will sextile Mars. This is absolutely amazing. And you are definitely going to feel this in a really big way because Mercury, your ruling planet in this harmonious aspect, making things smooth and easy for you with Mars that's in your sign. So this is very stimulating. All right. Your mind's going to be stimulated. You're going to be physically stimulated as well. Outgoing, there's a sense of adventure. You could be thinking about traveling. You may be traveling around this time. Now, remember, Mercury is retrograde so there could be uh traveling to places that you loved in the past or could be traveling with people that you haven't seen in a long time or traveling to see people that you haven't seen in a long time so i i love this aspect and then as you can see you know i listed these aspects below but next week the week after that mercury goes direct no longer retrograde we got venus trining uranus we have venus uh uh trining pluto too so you see that when i say it's just this you know, cosmic weather, there's this storm in the beginning, everything you're going to get past this. Um, you're going to pass Saturn's test and you're going to, you're going to groove into September. <laughs> Who says that? Oh my goodness. Uh, anyway, Gemini, let's get started. Let's see what's going on for you for August 19th to the 25th. This is for Gemini, Gemini rising, Gemini moon. If you want to read for any other placements in your chart, you are absolutely welcome to. Let's do it, Gemini. Okay. Um, Gemini. All right. So are you ready to groove into September? Uh, I do a traditional cult across spread. It offers the best overview. If we need to pull clarifiers, Gemini, you know that we will. You know I got you. Secondly, Gemini, y'all are amazing. Y'all are going through some big changes. Again, Mars and Jupiter being in your sign, even though they're squaring Saturn, which you may feel, again, that could be a lot of career energy, fame energy for a lot of y'all. It's still 
you know, it's just, it's like almost motivating you. It's almost like you're like, okay, I'm ready to just move forward and get things done and get everything that, you know, I deserve. So anyway, let's see what's going on. Uh, yeah, this is definitely going to be a week for you. All right. This is going to be a week for you. You are going to feel that squeeze, but like I said earlier, you're definitely like, you're nothing's going to stop you. I mean, okay, let's, let's get started. You got the Nine of Wands. Very great. Very exciting. Nine of Wands. This is, uh, it's just like you're on a mission. You're on a mission. Nothing's going to stop you. You're going to, you're going for the things that you want. You have this drive. You have this passion. In fact, Knight of Wands, that's Knights are fire. Wands are fire. This is double fire. This is just blazing forward. And again, travel is coming up. Some of y'all may be thinking about traveling, traveling to, you know, see friends, traveling with friends. Remember all this Virgo energy that we're moving into Virgo season. There could be some family energy that's happening as well. But I absolutely love this. This is passions, even work related with the wands, career enterprise. Uh, so, yeah, there's there. Nothing's going to stop you now. All right. Now you do have the nine of wands and the heart of your spread. So, yes. There's that squeeze that I was talking about. But the nine of wands, this is all about resilience. This is saying, no, 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 no. Saturn, you can squeeze me. Squeeze harder. Squeeze harder. I can take it. That's what he's saying. Look at him standing in front of the wands. He's not letting anyone take his wands away. He's not letting anyone take away anything that he's worked hard for. All right. So, uh, yes. Again, there is that squeeze, but again, you're, uh, this is perseverance. You're strong. You're saying, bring it on, bring it on. Nothing can, you know, nothing can take me away from my wands. Um, is there a relationship stuff happening for y'all? Uh, it looks like it. <laughs> Partnerships and relationships. Because you did get the seven of swords. Um, in your challenge area. I think some of y'all are going to recognize that this week is a week that you're going to be like, all right, well, I am quick witted. I am very strategic. I can groove into September uh, and I'm no longer going to take shortcuts. I'm going to do things because I'm feeling that Saturn squeeze. Saturn wants discipline. Saturn's giving me this test and in the end, Saturn is karma, so I am going to be rewarded. So I'm going to do, I'm going to work with Saturn's limitations, restrictions, whatever that may be, but it may have this shift, the way that you're seeing things, okay? But being honest with yourself is is the big thing here. And I feel that a lot of y'all are going to recognize that. And I encourage you to, okay, that's going to make the nine of ones energy easier for you uh, to move forward in the things that you want. Now, the other thing is, this is a week where, sure, i would advise you with that cosmic storm that's happening in the first half of the week uh first bring an umbrella you're going to be fine okay you're going to be absolutely good secondly there may be someone that is doing something that is a little deceitful and dishonest and you recognize that this week okay that it well i mean you've got the seven of swords so uh it, it, this card is a you know associated with like lying cheating stealing it can be something with work it can be something uh with colleagues but uh and even relationships you know the nine of wands it, so you've got these three sagittarius cards sagittarius is your uh rules your seventh house of partnerships and relationships and commitment so something one-on-one -on -one. it can be career it can be work it can be love and romance uh so there is it seems like you're really hanging in there but there may be something that surfaces remember mercury squaring uranus is, is happening as well am i right surprising news and whatnot uh so just keep that in mind there may be some someone being a little mischievous all right this week now with the ten of wands in your crown it almost seems like you you're you're hanging in there and you're just saying, OK, I can do this. I've got this, but reach out to others if you need to. All right. You don't have to do it alone. You don't you absolutely do not have to do it alone. Um, and I feel like that may be a big message for you this week because you do have the devil in the root of your spread. Uh, you do see that the two people from your card, the lovers, card six, are now chained to the devil. So there's going to be something here where it just seems like you're, you're 
you're recognizing something may not be working this week. All right. Something that's not good for you. Again, did I mention earlier there could be like a toxic boss or a relationship or, you know, colleague or whatnot, but also in love and romance, you know, this card is the devil. So it's, you know, uh, pessimistic thinking, uh, vices, addictions, codependency is a big part of this. Again, there may be something here that you're recognizing. Uh, the chains are free. You can break free anytime you want. And so there is something here where it just seems like if there's something going on, acknowledge it, okay? Because you've got the Ten of Wands in your crown, and he, listen, he's carrying so many wands. It's almost like he's distracting himself from facing some of his truth. Remember, you also have the Seven of Swords. Like I said, face your truths, no tr shortcuts. But he can't see where he's going because he's carrying so many ones. So just remember to acknowledge anything that may be happening this week. And then you also have the four of pentacles in your future. Very, very interesting here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mm. Because four of pentacles is Capricorn. The double is Capricorn. You have all these Sagittarius cards. We have a full moon in Aquarius. Um, very, very interesting. Capricorn rules your eighth house of death and rebirth and transformation, but also money, finances. There's something there. And then you've got sun and Capricorn. You got the four of uh, pentacles. Just putting things in order. All right. It's just putting things in order, um, but being flexible. Okay. Being flexible with. Uh, again, there could be something here with career pentacles. We have careers to make money. This is money and wealth. Also, it's your physical reality. So the foundations of your life. So there really could be something here that you're, you're holding on to. I'm wondering if it's something that you may want to let go. Well, let's do some clarifiers. Yeah. Okay. So when I said love and relationship partnerships, there you go. Uh, and that can be career too. It could even be platonic here, but, um, let me just, I'm going to clarify the Ten of Wands. Yeah, okay, Queen of Cups. Uh, yeah, so it does seem like uh, Four of Pentacles and the Two of Pentacles. Okay, um, well, yeah. It does seem like whatever you're holding on to and persevering for, um, it does look really good to hold on to that, but you've got to surrender a part of it. There's something about it uh, that needs to go with the devil here um and then you've got the four of pentacles and the two of pentacles another capricorn card by the way so finances may be something that you're really focusing on moving forward in the future and it could be because you've got this special bond this union you have the two of cups i mean this is love transcending time and sp uh, space itself it is two becoming one all right a lot of healing a lot of passion here i love this uh and then you've got the queen of cups which is just all this love energy heart energy she does what her heart desires and uh it seems like everything that you're doing is moving in this place of love now with these cards there definitely is a lot of uh, just really sticking to this structure is really what it is, okay? Committing to a structure there because there's got to be changes this week for sure. Uh, committing to the structure, the foundations of your life. Again, there's a lot of family energy. There's also uh, money and, and career. Uh, it does seem like there may be something that you're moving into that you've never experienced before, okay? Maybe with finances, maybe with career, there could be a shift in career. There's something there. But uh, again, uh, just think about the foundations of your life as well. Now, let's get to your stuff. Oh, my goodness. Gemini. Um, what a week. What a week this is going to be. Uh, if you like this reading, it would be great if you like, uh, subscribe, all that fun algorithm stuff. And let's let's hear it. Leave some comments. Tell me what's going on. I actually really want to know for this week, uh, because it's such a big week. It's one of the biggest weeks of 2024. Um, and you know I love y'all. All right. So let's, yeah. Okay. So you're going to be fine. You're going to be absolutely fine. Let go of, of something that is just draining your energy. And yeah, it can bring you this sense of temporary joy and pleasure and whatnot, but You've got so much to look forward to. The devil energy, it holds you back. It's almost like an energy vampire as well, all right? So that's a part of this story, especially when you think about the fact that Mercury squaring Uranus, okay, so there could still be something surprising here, some news that comes up, um, and that's something that you may be like persevering through, but 
it corresponds to the full moon in Capricorn that we had last month and the month before that, uh, the one last month, Mercury was squaring Uranus. So there could be something tied to around that time. That was July 21st. Anyway, you got, you're good. You're, look at this. You got the Ace of, you got the Ace of Wands and the Ace of Pentacles. So a lot of y'all are looking for change in a really big way. Uh, it's it's going to happen here. It's going to happen. There's no doubt. You got to keep moving. And that's why this perseverance is good. Just recognize what you have to let go. And it may be something that you hear this week as well. That's surprising. But Ace of Wands, Aces, new chains, new beginnings. Remember, I said this full moon is the end of a cycle. Therefore, a new cycle begins. This is really great. This is your passions, your ambitions, a lot of creative energy with Ace of Wands. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of love stuff here, by the way. A lot of sexual energy that's happening. Um, interesting. Very, very interesting. Uh, but anyway, with Ace of Wands, yes, there is something new that you want go for it go for it remember you create your reality but this is a week of opportunities as well and you see a big one coming through you got the ace of pentacles i mean can you believe that can you believe that this is absolutely amazing um ace of pentacles in your external factors area you got all these pentacles ace of pentacles two of pentacles four of pentacles there is this sense of something rooting up in your life it money sure um which is it's the biggest pentacle in the deck, but remember pentacles are your physical reality as well. This could be the start of a new relationship. This could be the start of a new career. There's something new and big that the universe is saying you've earned this. This is amazing. You're doing awesome. You could even have two options. That you have to decide between, let me clarify that one too. Yeah. Oh my God. Look at all these pentacles. You got money on your mind, mind on your money. Uh, yeah. So it, this is really great because the eight of pentacles is just you're in it to win it this is remember you got that perseverance here you got like even to the point where it's just like i got this i don't need your help like this is i'm good uh eight of pentacles just working being diligent laser focused toward your goals toward your legacy toward your passions everything's going to happen for you because of that diligence all right this card actually is attributed to sun and virgo so remember that is a lot of work energy your daily activities and routines uh and virgo represents your fourth house so a lot of this kind of have to do with home related matters for sure which again includes significant other your domestic life but y'all are moving into this direction that's really amazing and again seems like there may be uh, prioritizing something as well. You're going to feel that you need to prioritize, prioritize something more than another thing. Now the emperor, absolutely amazing. He is the emperor. I mean, there's divine masculine. This is mastery of self. And so that's what you're moving in that direction. And I want you to move in that direction because that is something that you've got uh, your eyes on being in a place where you have a lot of authority. You have all this passion. You are sitting in this throne uh, it, of your hopes and wishes and dreams, actually, because the emperor is Aries. All right. You even see the Rams in his throne. Aries. Remember, the North Node is an Aries in your 11th house of your hopes and wishes and dreams. So really nice he is he's got the world in his hand i mean he is the ruler uh but this is really really great really you know big parental energy coming he is like the dad of tarot so uh there could be this wanting to be seen as a strong authority figure at home as well even your community could be a big thing uh and then you also have and work related for sure and then you've got temperance in your final outcome i mean whoa if there's anything here i mean all this partnership relationship energy first of all that's happening here and then you're building upon it you're definitely adjusting to some new things a lot of you know you got the ace of pentacles coming coming through but then you got temperance uh who is sagittarius and again that is your seventh that's a partnership to relationships but you have archangel michael in your final outcome you've got an archangel i mean you're fine you're protected you're good you're uh, this is absolutely amazing. Okay. So there is a sense of balance with temperance, uh, balancing everything, 
there's remember I said this is a month of uh, practicing patience. Seems like that you're going to tap into that energy. I think that again, I just I I feel it in your Gemini. Um, especially you see here, there is a sense of patience with temperance, uh, and there's that sense of balance here. Uh, it's got a foot in the water, foot in the land, the subconscious, the physical world. Really go remember, be in touch with your higher mind. Now you also see the archangel pouring between the cups all right there's that patience there's that uh self-restraint as well being mindful of what you're doing all right so that is if you've got two cups you go like psh, psh, psh. that's that's not how it works this is being in that flow all right being in that flow uh this is really great so even have that connection of like mind body spirit have all of that aligned, but you're absolutely good. Gemini. There's so much happening here. I can't, but you're definitely going to feel a little bit of a squeeze again. I just don't feel like it's going to be something that it just seems like it's going to motivate you. And a lot of it could be for this partnership, this relationship. It can be something new as well, like a new partnership, new relationship in career, in romance, in, you know, even maybe a new friend and uh maybe you're do like starting a business with a friend or, or what but anyway there's so much happening here and then you've got all these pentacles indicating there's going to be finances uh that are you know a lot of attention on that you're moving into that but it's something that you know the eight of pentacles is like whistle while you work energy you got it with the ace of pentacles don't forget the ace of wands here as well uh, but yeah, there is definitely, you're good. You're moving in this amazing direction. Gemini, thanks so much for tuning in next week. By the way, I, th I do September, I do September and we kick it off like boom. There's a lot happening the first week. Uh, like right up, right off the bat. We have that new moon in Virgo. Anyway, uh, we'll talk about that next week. Uh, and then don't forget actually next don't forget on thursday um sorry tuesday august 27th venus will try and uranus this is really special I, I i love this for you and you know there could be some financial matters they have like a breakthrough with uh and then and even love okay uh and then mercury goes direct so mercury is no longer retrograde and then thursday august 29th venus trining pluto that is so powerful that is so powerful. Uh, again, that's love, that's intimacy, that's romance, money as well. And you see that you are moving into that. It can be, uh, you know, platonic as well. There could be something there, but really powerful energy. Anyway, I'm going to let you go. Thanks so much, Gemini. I, uh, if you like this reading, it would be great if you like, subscribe, leave comments. Tell me what's going on. I'm Gemini rising. I, I'm looking at this like, oh, interesting. Uh, all right. Uh, I'll see you next week. All right. Thanks so much, Gemini. Bye-bye.